Today was the, uh, the rededication of the sign designating this site as where the Japanese uh, uh, attacked Alwood Beach 70 years ago today. In the towns and communities west of Santa Barbara, they still haven't forgotten. At roughly 7 o'clock on the evening of February 23, 1942, a Japanese submarine surfaced off the coast near the Elwood oil field and began shelling, firing 16 rounds over a period of 20 minutes, lighting up the sky with explosion after explosion. The sub, called I-17, was an indomitable weapon of war. At 365 feet long, it was the size of a football field and carried 17 torpedoes and six torpedo tubes, in addition to a five and a half inch deck gun and an airplane launch pad. It was capable of 90 day missions and its 100 man crew could sail 14,000 nautical miles, easily encompassing a mission to the California coast and back. Moreover, the Japanese were familiar with the Elwood Oil Works. They'd used it for refueling in the years prior to the war. It was a good strategic target because oil was so crucial to the American war effort. And yet, the shelling of Elwood Beach was haphazard, missing the storage tanks entirely and causing minimal damage overall. If the Japanese hoped to destroy the oil works, they failed. But it's possible that wasn't their intent. After all, a submarine's chief mission was to disable warships. So I-17 was equipped with armor-piercing shells, not the kind of incendiary missiles that could have done permanent damage to the oil works. This has caused speculation that the attackers had something else in mind. The attack might have been no more than a foray to determine whether 11 weeks after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese could broach American coastal defenses in which case the shelling would have been no more than a taunting signature. Another more bizarre theory is that the attack was Commander Nishino's personal revenge against the oil workers, who years earlier during a refueling stop had laughed at him when he'd slipped and fallen onto a cactus. Another theory is that the attack was merely an attempt to cause panic, in which case it succeeded brilliantly. Just a day later, the city of Los Angeles was gripped by a rumor of a Japanese airstrike. Five people died in the ensuing confusion, which involved anti-artillery fire, before the so-called Battle of Los Angeles was declared a false alarm. But there was an even more serious repercussion. Only four days earlier, President Roosevelt had authorized the use of internment camps for Japanese Americans and tens of thousands of California citizens were now incarcerated for the duration of the war. Yet more innocent victims of the Pearl Harbor attack and of the shelling of Elwood Beach on February 23, 1942.